Hi friends, uh, now we are going to see Fermat theorem and Euler's theorem. Let us start with the Fermat theorem. Fermat theorem is otherwise called as Fermat's Little Theorem. So this uh, theorem is widely used in public key crypto systems and in uh, various methods like primality testing. So uh, let us see the theorem. This theorem involves two numbers, uh, a number P which is a prime number and a which is a positive integer this integer must not be divisible by p uh, that is to be simple the gcd of a and p must be equal to 1 so you can apply fermat theorem only if these two conditions are satisfied that is the number p must be a prime number and a must be a positive number and gcd of a and p must be equal to 1 if these both conditions are satisfied, you can apply Fermat theorem. So what is Fermat theorem actually? So Fermat theorem is a power p minus 1 is equal to 1 mod p. You can move this modulus p in both the sides of equal to. That is a power p minus 1 mod p equal to 1. Like, the, like that also, you can write the theorem. Uh, you can even split the theorem. So a power p minus 1 is a power p divided by a a power 1 or a power p divided by a so you can move this uh, divided by a to that side of equal to so it will be becoming a power p is equal to a into mod p this this is the theorem you can write it in various versions so the theorem is a power p minus 1 equal to 1 mod p let us see how uh, we can make use of this theorem let us see an example in some cases at some point of uh, time, we will be uh, supposed to solve this types of equation. 13 power 16 mod 17. This if you are getting, instead of calculating 13 power 16, then taking modulus 17, it is a tough task, right? Directly you can apply Fermat theorem. The thing is, you have to check two things. After modulus, are you having a prime number? Yeah, 17 is a prime number. Then you have to check the GCD of 13 and 17 are 1. Or 13 must not be divisible by 17 either way. So GCD of 13 and 17 is 1. So I can apply the Fermat theorem. I am looking here after modulus I am having 17. In the power I am having the previous number 16. So the value is 1. Directly without calculating having much calculation using Fermat theorem I arrived at the answer 1. So is this uh, the only case you can apply Fermat theorem like that you may ask. There are also other cases. If you cannot directly apply the Fermat theorem, you can make modifications. We shall see an example. It will be more clear. Clear. 13 power 18 mod 17. If this is given, you are checking. So 18 and 17 are not divisible and 17 is a prime number. Both the conditions are satisfied. Now I am checking. Here you are having 17, here you are having 18. You must be having the previous number. But instead of that, you are having the next number. So you can rewrite this equation. So I can rewrite that as 13 power 16 into 13 power 2. So 16 plus 2 gives you 18. I am splitting this 18 as 16 plus 2. So 13 power 16 into 13 power 2 mod 17. We know that 13 power 16 mod 17 is 1. So 1 into 13 power 2 mod 17. 13 square is 169, 169 mod uh, 17 is 16 because 170 gives, uh, 170 is divisible by uh, 17 and you are having 169. So the value will be 16. You can uh, calculate modulus in your own way. So the, uh, if some other expression is given, try to express in Fermat theorem format and you can reduce the expression and you can solve the problems easily. We can take another example, 13 power 15 mod 17. So here, uh, 15 is not divisible by 17 and 17 is a prime number. But then, 15 is not 17 minus 1. It is a number which is very much lesser. So you can also not express in as the second example. For this cases, you cannot use Fermat theorem. Hope uh, Fermat theorem is clear. Now, uh, let us see the Next theorem, Euler's theorem. So what is Euler's theorem? It is similar to Fermat theorem. Here we had P, instead of that, here you will be having phi of n. That is the difference. So it states that for every a and n, 
that are that are relatively prime relatively prime means the, their gcd must be one so it states that for every a and n that are relatively prime a power phi of n is equal to 1 mod n so this is the formula and uh, phi of n is the Yule Euler's torsion function so what do you mean by Euler's torsion function means it will be giving you the count of numbers which are relatively prime to n so instead in, uh, phi of n you are stating right in n suppose n is a number how many numbers are relatively prime with n that count will be given by this phi of n uh, phi of n can be evaluated in three cases you are having formula for direct evolution if n is prime phi of n will be n minus 1 this is the formula let us see how would they have derived that so phi of 7 i am taking as an example so if i am applying the formula it will be 7 minus 1 that is 6 manually i am calculating what are the numbers which are relatively prime with 7 and also less than 7 so 7 is a prime number 1 and 7 are relatively prime so what is relatively prime actually you will not be having a common factor between two numbers so for 7 and 1 except 1 for 7 and 1 1 is the common factor for 7 and 2 1 is the common factor 7 and 3 no common factor 7 and 4 no common factor 7 and 5 no common factors 7 and 6 no common factors so the numbers which are relatively prime with 7 are 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 i am counting i am getting 6 so instead of manually uh, calculating this uh, relatively prime numbers and counting them i can directly apply the formula and write if it is a prime number this is the formula the next case is if it is not a prime number it is a product of two prime numbers say p and q what is the formula is phi of n is p, uh, p into q mean n is p into q means phi of n will be equal to phi of p into phi of q separately i am applying torsion function so this will be p minus 1 into q minus 1 so this is the second case here is an example phi of 21 i am considering i can express 21 as 7 into 3 so if, if i am applying the torsion formula it will be 7 minus 1 into 3 minus 1 that is 6 into 2 12 manually i am calculating what are the numbers which are relatively prime with 21 they are 1 2 4 5 8 it goes on till 20 manually you can sit and calculate and check this uh, if you are counting this you will be getting 12 so directly without uh, doing this manual calculation and counting those numbers i can arrive at 12 this case 2 calculation of torsion function is very much useful in rsa algorithm in rsa algorithm we will be using this torsion function formula phi of n is equal to p minus 1 into q minus 1 so clear explanation you can get it from this lecture then the third case Suppose if uh, it is not a prime number and it is not a product of prime number. What you can do is you can try to express the number in the powers of prime. For example, 8 is given. It is not prime. It is also not the product of prime. So I can express it as a power of prime like 2 power 3. 2 power 3 is equal to 8. So phi of n is equal to p power e minus p power e minus 1. This is the formula. I am applying 2 cube minus 2 square that is 8 minus 4 we are getting 4 manually i am calculating i am getting 1 3 5 and 7 are relatively prime with 8 the count is 4 so without doing manual calculation i can apply this formula and i can calculate the count of relatively prime numbers with the n value that gives me the torsion function once i am getting the torsion function i can apply it in the euler's theorem so the euler's theorem is a power phi of n is equal to 1 mod n you can also bring this mod n here a power phi of n mod n is equal to 1 you can rewrite this rewrite it as you like hope uh, both the theorems uh, were uh,